Thanks for joining us on Sunrise. Well, the International Mathematical Olympiad or Mathematics Olympiad, IMO, is the oldest of the International Science Olympiads. The first uh, IMO was held in Romania in 1959, and it has since been held annually. It's a rigorous two-day competition, including problems from various areas of mathematics. So we're joined by Executive Director and one of the founders of the South African Mathematics Foundation, Professor Johan Engelbrecht, as well as Dylan Nelson of Benonia High School, a member of the South African team that took part in the 52nd International Ma Mathematics Olympiad. Uh, it took place in Amsterdam this month. In fact, got back uh, yesterday, I believe. But uh, feel free to share your thoughts. Give us a call on 11 537 You can also leave a post on our Facebook page, uh, ETV Sunrise, as well as our Twitter page. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I feel quite honored to be in the presence of uh, such intellectual prowess. <laughs> Dylan, I'm going to ask you the first question. I mean, it must have been an amazing experience to be in um, Amsterdam. How did the South African team do? We did. It's, a, it's our best performance in quite a while. We came 41st overall, which is a lot better than last year. Um, we got one silver medal and two bronze medals, okay. and two honorable mentions, and then one other person. <laughs> <laughs> How many team members are there in There's the six. team? Six members, okay. And you're based in Johannesburg? Yes. And the rest of the team members? And mostly in Cape Town, Dalians from Durban. Okay. Prof, the, the South African Mathematics Foundation, uh, what does it do? How does it find these youngsters that are gifted in uh, mathematical ability? The Mathematics Foundation, please call me Johan. Uh, the Mathematics Foundation uh, came about in 2004 when the two learned societies got together, that's the uh, South African Mathematical Society, the more for, uh, for, for mathematicians, and the AMISA Association for Mathematics Education in South Africa, more for, 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 uh, for the mathematics teachers. They decided, and we decided, we need an, uh, an office for mathematics. And we started in 2004, uh, and since then we've been organizing quite a lot of, of uh, activities in mathematics, including the all Olympiad activities and our participation in international events. So how are the, the team members selected? What's the process that they, that they go through? It's quite a long process. You see, we have a number of Olympiads running, uh, including the South African Mathematics Olympiad. So we look at what how these youngsters do in the South African Mathematics Olympiad. But we also have training camps. We have a, an internet-run talent search uh, attempt and and uh, and they write uh, monthly problems which they submit to us and according to and then from all these information we in the end select a team of of six members for our international uh, our international participation i'm assuming then you work in in conjunction rather with uh, the mathematics teachers or head of departments in the various schools we have good relationship with the education departments, the national education department, as well as provincial education departments, and are running quite a number of projects within schools. So yes, I think we know most of the mathematics teachers and mathematics people in the country. <laughs> well, Dylan, I'm sure um, you know that maths is not one of a lot of uh, kids favorite subjects. It's, it can be difficult if you haven't been given the right foundation or, or if it hasn't been you. I mean, what is your experience of maths? Have you always loved it? You come from a family that's uh, known as the Boffin family. <laughs> it's been quite good at it. Okay. I only really got very interested or enjoying it in high school. Yeah. So. So it's only in, in now in, in later years that you, you mm -hmm. realize. Is there something that you want to pursue in, in this field? Uh, not really. I don't know. I have done it yet. Is it? I'll so what would it. you like to pursue in terms I'll, of a career? Well, I'll, I don't know what career I want, but I'll probably go study maths or computer science or what, something. What, what grade are you in? 11. Grade 11. Okay, so you're still making those type of decisions. But I Professor, what, what's done to make mathematics more exciting for kids out there? I think the Olympic activities, of course, is definitely a way of getting, of making mathematics more exciting. And by the way, I very strongly believe in the type of mathematics that we do in Olympiad mathematics. It teaches you to think. Yeah. And it uh, serves as a very good preparation for the for university mathematics. So does it differ from the maths that they use in school? I think to an extent, <laughs> Dylan, <laughs> you, 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 you can help <laughs> out here. But I think it's definitely more... Uh, focused on problem solving yeah and that's very important not only in mathematics but all <laughs> all over your whole being 
Because that, that's the question that we all asked in school. You know, you come into a maths class and, and you learn whatever it is that you needed to learn. And you'd always say to your teacher, well, how am I going to apply this when I'm out there, you know? And it, it was only when you left high school and you were in varsity and you realized, wow, I actually should have uh, focused more on what I was taught <laughs> because now I need to apply yeah. it, especially if you did mm -hmm. subjects like statistics or any of your, um, um, your engineering subjects at, at university. So how's that, that bridge uh, formed between what you do in school and then this type of mathematics? Unfortunately, I think uh, a lot of school mathematics is taught in a very algorithmic, technical type of way. So you do, you play with symbols and you don't really know what you I've heard the analogy that people say it's like learning to play the piano without hearing the sound. And unfortunately, that happens a lot in school mathematics, the, the curriculum mathematics. And I think Taking, uh, taking part in Olympiads gives you a, a feeling of the sound of mathematics. Yeah. So I would strongly advise everybody to participate in Olympiad mathematics. It's not only for the, for, for the winners like Dylan here. Yes. He's, he's one of our, <laughs> our, our talents. Yeah. But for every young child, it's important to take part in Olympiad mathematics. It, it's helped you prepare for not only university type of mathematics, but also for le uh, learning how to solve problems. Well, there you have it for our viewers and parents and teachers that are watching. Encourage your kids <laughs> to get involved in uh, Olympic Olympiad uh, mathematics. But uh, you've got a problem for Dylan to solve today on air, which I think is quite <laughs> exciting. Uh, <laughs> I, Dylan, I, 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 I'll give you an, an, an easy one, just to illustrate what we yeah. mean by, by, by problem solving, just okay. to just to get an idea of what type of problems we do. Let's say you have a watermelon, a big one, <laughs> 50 kilograms. So I, I have to confess I've never seen such a big one. But <laughs> as you know, uh, many f fruit consists mainly of water. And this watermelon consists of 98% water. 98% of the total mass of this watermelon is water. Now, you put this watermelon outside in the sun, and it let it lie there for a few days and some of the water evaporates and now after a few days only 96 percent of the weight of the watermelon is water what is the new weight of the watermelon okay well uh, 25 kilograms <laughs> You see, that's... Uh, Was that that's, correct? That, <laughs> unfortunately, yes. <laughs> How did you... I mean, you did it so quickly in your head. What was the, the processing? Well, okay, well, if the watermelon weighs 50 kilograms and 98% of that's water, then 1% or 150 of that would be skin or whatever else the watermelon has. And um, so there's one kilogram that's skin or whatever else the watermelon has. And now that it's 96% water, that one kilogram is now 4% of the total weight instead of just 2%. And if one kilogram is 4%, then um, it will be 25 kilograms, it's 100%. I'm jealous. <laughs> so, so it actually halves its weight. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I wish I could figure out something like that that quickly. You mentioned that um, two of your members won medals. I believe it's uh, Sean Veltsenoff of Westerford High. Wenzel. Wenzel. Um, Westerford High School, is that correct? Yes. He won um, silver medal. a silver medal. In fact, there's a picture up, um, a picture of him there. And then he Kira Dustervolt, is that yes. correct? She won um, a bronze. bronze medal. And then Ashraf as well. Ashraf yeah. also won a bronze medal. A bronze medal Ashraf as well. Um, which school was Ashraf from? Uh, Run the Bosch Boys High. Okay, and then Kira was from Springfield Convent Senior High School. How was your school um, supporting you in... in your Olympiad endeavors. It was, is there huge support? Do you have a good mentorship relationship with your mathematics teacher? or mm -hmm. Am I putting you on the spot there? <laughs> <A bit> <laughs> I'm sure... Uh, they encourage me to participate. Yes. They leave me alone and let me do what I want and practice and whatever. So. How do you prepare for, for an Olympiad? You just try old papers mostly. Yeah. Which is what we used to do when we were preparing for our, our matric exams. Uh, our teachers used to advise us that you can, there's only so many ways to ask a question, so go over ways of asking that particular question. Is that true? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it is true, but that's not the ideal way of preparing. Of course, you need practice. Yeah. And uh, 
doesn't matter how good you are. You need to. You need training and you need practice. It's like with an athlete. If you don't practice, doesn't matter how much talent you have. Mm. You'll never uh, reach the top. So uh, I think he's a little uh, reluctant to say how much time he spends on mathematics. But uh, I would like to mention that Dylan yeah. was one of the uh, one of our grade 11 uh, learners that attended the uh, the Olympiad, and he also got an honourable mention. That's uh, meaning that he solved at least one question perfectly correct. Now, I'm yes. sure he solved more than more than one question. Not just one perfectly. <laughs> 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 well, Dylan, thanks so much for joining us in the studio. We wish you all the best uh, for whatever it is that you choose to to pursue. And uh, Prof, thanks so much for joining us some light on uh, the South African Mathematics Foundation as well and um, Olympiad Mathematics you heard uh, the the call there get in get involved um, start figuring out uh, or putting practical aspects to your mathematics lessons we're joined in studio by Johan Engelbrecht uh, professor Johan Engelbrecht of the South African Mathematics Foundation and uh, Dylan Nelson who is a student at uh, Benoni High School thanks so much for joining us we'll see you after the short ad break